wow, you know, I like you listening to the prayers of the saints. May God be with you. Thank you, Pastor Poshua. Uh, this is your time, my pastor. You have been a wonderful messenger of the Most High God for throughout this week. We can't wait to hear what the Lord has in store for you, for us, using you this morning. And pastor, say it as the Lord wants you to say it. This is your time, my pastor. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, Mama. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, one of the things I should pray for is to have your enthusiasm um, <laughs> so early in the morning. Uh, good Amen. morning, Saints Molweni, uh, Sanbonani, Dumelang. Um, happy Sabbath. Sabato uh, Molimo, Dobrai Subote, Ansir Kwaila. I don't know which other language I can use to say happy Sabbath. But in all those languages, good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, to you. Now, I, I, I want to thank you all for being with us throughout the week. And um, this morning, we are finishing off with the third angel's message. And uh, I must say that there's a part that is going to be missing from this series, which is uh, the part of Revelation 18, when um, all these messages are brought in the loud cry message. But Maybe God one day will open up that opportunity so that we can share that part. Now, let's go together to Revelation chapter 14, um, verses 9 to 12, which is the third angel's message. And the Bible tells us here, and a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receives his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night to worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So this is the message, uh, and there's quite a lot in this message, and we may not be able to cover everything in detail. But one of the things that we see here is that there is a warning against the reception of the mark of the beast. And if we had time, we would show this through both scripture and history. The mark of the beast is actually a mark that distinguishes the beast and that shows its authority. All right. And um, if you study well the beast of Revelation 13, um, the first beast, because remember, the second beast points people back to the first beast. All right. The second beast erects the image to the beast, meaning a likeness to what the beast, the first beast did, which was a unification of church and state um, that ended up in using the state to enforce religious dogmas. All right, so this is what we find here in Revelation chapter 13. And we know that this religious power actually distinguished itself by pushing for Sunday laws. And these Sunday laws were actually pushed through Emperor Constantine by the first um, Sunday law that was enacted in 321, which actually progressed and progressed until people were persecuted by the time you get to around 538. People were actually persecuted and some killed who refused to honor uh, this power and, and, and keep its religious dogmas, especially that of Sunday um, sacredness, Sunday observance. All right, so this, uh, this power actually uh, challenged even the Protestants when the Protestants were actually uh, going away. They said, okay, if you're saying um, by the Bible and Bible alone, sola scriptura, well, the Bible points to the observance of the seventh day Sabbath, Saturday, but you are keeping Sunday, which has no scriptural authority except for our ecclesiastical authority as um, the Roman Catholic Church. So this is what they said. And now we learn that at the end of time, this power will come back into resurgence. The deadly wound will heal. And as I've been sharing, 
the process of the healing of the deadly wound has been accelerated in uh, recent times. And we are going to come to a point very soon where we are going to be pressured and we are going to be uh, prosecuted for not honoring Sunday um, pretty soon. Of course, Sunday sacredness right now is not the mark of the beast because there are no laws that are enforcing us to keep Sunday. But when Sunday is legislated by law, then it will become the mark of the beast, which is going to be showing how the beast is exercising power throughout all the nations of the earth. All right, remember the first angel's message called us to worship the creator and the, the, the sign that God gave for his creative power was actually the Sabbath, which reminded us on a weekly basis Week by week, um, people were reminded that they were created by God and that distinguished the children of Israel from the surrounding nations. And one of the things that Satan would do in seducing God's people to idolatry was to cause them to forget the Sabbath. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So remember the, 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 the war in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 is against those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the mark of the beast is exactly to do that, to fight against those who keep the commandments of God. So it makes sense in the context that the mark of the beast is something that militates or fights against the law of God. Now, which better way to fight against the law of God than to erect a counterfeit Sabbath that takes people's minds away from the commandment that points us to our creator and takes our minds away from the from 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 the from the commandment which is the seal of god why do i call this commandment the seal it is because this commandment actually is the one that points us to number one who is the lawgiver uh, it's yahweh or jehovah our god and then secondly, it is the one that tells us what is his title. The Bible says he created, so he is the creator. And thirdly, what is his territory? Where does this law apply? The Bible says he created heaven and earth. And therefore, this law among all the Ten Commandments is the only one that has the distinguishing mark of a seal. And therefore, in, Satan knows that if he attacks this law, then he will have undermined all the commandments of God. And those who persist in honoring God by keeping the Sabbath, actually, they are going to be persecuted. That's why the Bible says, here is the patience of the saints, which is an expression of when God avenges those who have stood for the truth. It is a phrase that is used in Revelation 13, verse 10, when it talks about um, the, the, the first beast receiving a deadly wound. Then it says, here is the patience and faith of the saints. And again, when the Bible speaks about God avenging his people um, towards those who were forcing and forcing the mark of the beast, then the Bible uses the same terminology. So I'm trying to show you in different ways how this Sunday sacredness, which is going to be enforced by law, is the mark of the beast, and how it answers the question of how the dragon is going to make war with God's people at the end of time. But here is the good news, friends. Here is the good news, is that God now stands to vindicate his people in the third angel's message. Those who will have suffered persecution, those who will have suffered martyrdom, those who will have suffered being chased to the mountains, being chased to the caves of the earth, those who will have faced being not able to buy or sell, and those who will have faced the death decree eventually, that those who do not have the mark of the beast should be killed. God is going to vindicate them because now God says that if any man worships the beast in his image and receives his mark in his forehead or in his, in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And friends, let me tell you something. You can picture an angry dragon. Are we together? Because when you say dragon, immediately in your mind, it's something scary. It is something intimidating. It is something uh, dreadful. It is something fearful. Are we together, friends? But the Bible, when it speaks about the wrath of God in other places like Revelation chapter 16, it calls it the wrath of the Lamb. You do not know 
and you do not even want to find out what a Roth lamb looks like. Are we together, friends? Now, the Bible, when it speaks about God pouring out his judgments upon the wicked, it says it is his estranged act because it almost seems to be contrary to the character of God. Are we together, friends? And this wrath of God is shown in the book of Revelation. It begins, if you look at Revelation chapter 15 and verse 2 and chapter 16 and verse 1 and 2, it, it begins with the pouring out of the seven last plagues. Are we together, friends? All the seven plagues are going towards those who receive the mark of the beast and those who worship the beast. Are we together? And then it progresses to the second coming of Christ. You see this in Revelation chapter 19, when Jesus is seen to be coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is the same as when 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 tells God's people to, it says, are those who are, who, are, who, are, who are being persecuted rest with us. When Christ comes in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon those that receive not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm paraphrasing it. All, all right, friends. So here we see that at the second coming of Christ, the wrath of God is again manifested towards the wicked when they are destroyed with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming, friends. So this is the second stage. So phase one of the wrath of God is when the seven last plagues are being poured out. And phase two is also is when Jesus is coming. And then phase three is when now the great white throne is, is judgment takes place and the ex executive judgment when the wicked are actually placed in the, in the lake of fire burning with brimstone. This will be the third stage and the final stage of the manifestation of the wrath of God. And the wicked will be destroyed never more to exist. Then God will create a new, new heavens and a new earth. So this is the process of the wrath of God. Now, the seven last plagues are something interesting. If you read in the giving of the seven last plagues, there's something that you will notice here. Um, the Bible says here, uh, and the fourth angel, this is speaking on the seven last plagues, uh, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed God. The name, um, the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So these people, instead of repenting by seeing these plagues, guess what these people are doing, friends? They're actually blaspheming God who has power over these plagues. Now look at verse 10. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the, on, on the seat of the beast, and the kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not for their deeds. Second strike now, friends. These people are being given plagues, and instead of repenting, what do they do? They curse God to his face. And lastly, you see the last plague um, that falls upon men, the great hail, and verse 21 says, and there fell upon men um, a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God who had power of this, over this place. So here, friends, you see that these people are so wicked. They are so entrenched in their disrespect for God, in their disobedience to God, in their separation of themselves from God, that there is nothing that God does. God tried to win them to himself through the preaching of the gospel, the manifestation of the grace of God, and, and the manifestation of Jesus hanging on the cross, the love of God is appealing to them. The Holy Spirit is speaking to their hearts. The, 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 you know, the, the angels of heaven are working with the preachers. The, the mm. Holy Spirit is working with the preachers to mm. woo these people to God, and they have rejected that. They mm. have rejected it plain out, friends. And the seven last plagues show us that when someone has rejected the grace of God as manifested through Jesus, there is nothing that God can do to save them. Not even the plagues can cause them to say, no, now we repent. Now we see the seriousness of this thing. No, friends, they are adamant and they stand for what they believe in. They reject God. And instead of repenting, they blaspheme him. And you see this also on the third stage. Um, Actually, when Jesus comes, the Bible tells us that these people run to the mountains and hills. They want nothing to do with Jesus. They don't stay and say, no, Jesus, we are sorry, please forgive us. They run away. They want nothing to do with Jesus. When you're looking at the third stage of this, um, of this wrath of God, you see 
that the wicked, they are shown, you know, the, the great white throne judgment is seen, friends. And according to, 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 to Philippians chapter two, the Bible tells us that every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Even after they make that confession, they still confederate together outside the city and they <laughs> attack the city one last time. The spirit of rebellion has not abated once because <laughs> once you reject the grace of God as manifested through Jesus Christ, <laughs> judgments will not change your mind. When you see the saints standing on the walls of Zion when they are standing on the walls of the new Jerusalem in their glorified bodies, when you see Jesus on his throne, when you see the gold glittering of the, of the new Jerusalem, those things will not cause the wicked to change their mind. They will not say, oh, now we see we have been wrong. Yes, they will say that, but that will not cause them to yield and say, what can we do to be saved? No, they will not say that. They will go and attack the same city, mm. same Jesus that they have confessed to be Lord and Savior. So friends, the gospel is so powerful. You know, I, I hear some people saying that, ah, no, these people walked with Jesus. So if we had walked with Jesus, maybe we would have changed. No, 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 friends. God knew that the best way to win the human heart is not for Jesus to appear personally to you. It is for you to hear the gospel preached. The foolishness of preaching is what God has chosen to be the best way to convert a sinner Amen. to Christ. Amen. It is not taking you. If God thought that the best way to transform the sinner is to take him from planet earth and take them to heaven, mm -hmm. he would have done that. He would have taken us one by mm -hmm. one and taken us to heaven. That is nothing to God. And friends, let me tell you, read the story of Hayes and Force. Hayes and Force received the same vision visions that we believe that God gave to Ellen White. He received the visions. He saw the heavenly glory. He saw the narrow way. He saw everything. He saw Jesus on his glory. He saw the sanctuary. He saw everything, but he rejected it. He said, I want nothing to do with this. And when he met Ellen White, he said, now I am a lost man. I have no cord in me response to spiritual things. He had seen heaven. So it is only the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here's the good news in the third angel's message. In case you are asking yourself, where is the gospel in this? The mm -hmm. Bible says in Hebrews chapter two and verse nine, here's the good news. The Bible says, now we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus do? He tasted death for every man. Of course, you use your mm -hmm. mouth and your tongue and your taste buds to taste, friends. And remember that in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed to the Father and said, Father, if you be willing, let this cup pass mm -hmm. from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. When Jesus was on the garden of Gethsemane, when he was on the brink of the cross, he was facing the wine of the wrath of God, friends. And he trembled at the thought of drinking from that cup. But Jesus said, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus, when he went from Gethsemane to the cross, he drank the wine of the wrath of God to its dregs. He did not leave a sip of it so that none of us have to drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So that is the good of us have to none of us and say, yes, there's the wrath of God that is waiting, but none of us have to experience it because Jesus experienced all of it on our behalf. May God move upon us that we take this gospel and we receive it and we possess it by the grace of God with every fiber of our being. And that we, after receiving and experiencing this gospel, take it to the world and tell the world that there is good news. There is a Jesus who saves. And let us not fear the wrath of the dragon. Yes. Because Jesus has saved us. Jesus mm -hmm. has bought us with a price. And mm -hmm. Jesus will save us from the wrath of the dragon. 
and his wrath will be manifested to those who persist on persecuting us. Even those who are persecuting you today, rest, relax. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Don't ever try to avenge yourself. Jesus knows, and there is a day of recompense. When God, mm. has someone abused you? Has someone uh, uh, beat you up? Has someone called you names? Has mm. someone abused you and even threatened to take your life? Jesus says, rest, mm. rest in me. If mm. the courts of this world don't bring you justice, mm. if the, the, the police of this world ridicule you and mock you when you're bringing your abuse case to them, if the church even does not listen to you, Mm. Um, after suffering abuse and being beaten and being abused and seeing your children beaten and, and, and your child raped. And if you do not receive justice in this world, the wrath of God is coming and God is going to recompense and woe unto him who faces that wrath. You would not wish it on your worst enemy because when God does anything, he does it perfectly. Even when he avenges his children, he does it perfectly. So let us rest in Jesus. Amen. Let us entrust everything to him. Amen. He will take care of us. Let us be patient. God is in control. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus who Amen. drank the wine of your wrath to its dregs. So that though we have sinned, Though we deserve death, yet eternal life was proffered to us through Jesus Christ. This is good news, Lord, mm. that the wrath that we read about in the book of Revelation, none mm. of us have to face because Jesus has already, has already faced it. Your, mm. your full wrath hey. upon himself. Until he felt as a sinner alone, forsaken of God by men, what we needed to experience mm. because of sin. May none of us, Lord, reject that love. Mm. May none of us be among this number that will receive your wrath. We are sisters, Lord, mm. and children that have mm. faced the wrath of men. Oh, so. Lord, come through for them. Mm. Defend your children. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name. Thank mm -hmm. you.